Hello, good evening everybody and uh, welcome to Empowerment Mondays with me, Gilbert Samba. It's another wonderful Monday again that the Lord has made possible for you and I to be here. And I know that the Lord has something great for you and for me. I want to welcome you on board wherever you may be watching from. Uh, hello to you already, our constant uh, number one viewer. Uh, to be present. Chupe Eves, welcome on board and welcome to everyone. It's a beautiful day and we are about to dive into another subject today, women in ministry. Welcome on board. Let's get started and get rolling from this end. It's 5 p.m. in Dallas, Texas. Good to have you all. Empowerment Mondays is here again. He's a way maker. Making a way where there seems to be no way as you hop in, just begin to share that video and invite somebody to be a part of this broadcast today. It's going to bless them in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead and start inviting everybody I can invite today. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. It's a beautiful month of November. God has been gracious. God has been awesome. He has carried us from January. This is November. One more, and we are out of this year. Into a greater thing the Lord is about to do. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We have a great woman of God today to talk with us. You will be blessed. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you were. We are receiving a beautiful piece from Sinat all the way from Lagos, Nigeria. The song that has gone all over the world. Making rounds in different languages and blessing people from, from all nations. This is a masterpiece. An incredible woman, highly anointed by the Lord. It's Empowerment Mondays, and I welcome everyone on board. Glad to have you watching from wherever you're watching. I am inviting as many friends as I possibly can. The women are taking the stage for the next four weeks hallelujah the women are taking the stage and they are going to be telling us some very important things we are in for a great time i'm inviting everybody today hallelujah i'm just inviting as many people as i can I worship you. I worship you. My God. They make a miracle worker. Promise people light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Oh, yes. Do you know that is how big our God is? He is a way maker, mighty God. A promise keeper is he. Woo! Glory to Jesus. Oh my goodness. I just have to talk everybody. Welcome on board, Mama Amel. Oh my goodness. Welcome on board to everyone that is watching at this time. Let me check who else is there. Uh, if I'm not able to see your comment, I may not be able to recognize or identify who is watching. But it's good to have you all watching right now. I am so thrilled. Let's just give her a couple of moments for this song to die down and then we are going to start our topic of discussion today. Apostle Ransom, all the way from Boya, good to have you, man of God. I'm sure you know our guest of today, Pastor Anita. You, you are a very good friend to the brother, Bishop Balinga. I'm sure you should know Pastor Anita. Hallelujah. We are in for a great time today. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Good to have you all watching from wherever you're watching right now. It's a beautiful 
thing to know you are out there watching. We worship the Lord for making it possible for us to be again together today. Good to have you, Mama Susie. Good to have you joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you all, everyone. Hallelujah. Let's just honor the name of the Lord. Our God is so mighty. He is so powerful. He is able to mend every broken heart. No matter what has happened, no matter what the enemy might have done, our God is able to mend every broken heart. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day and the topic of discussion today is uh, we're dealing with situations that are very common and are very delicate. We have a wife in ministry or we have a spouse. Husband is in ministry but wife is not in ministry and they do not agree. How do you balance it? Or you have a wife who is called by the Lord and the husband is not into ministry per se. How do you as a woman balance it and make sure you do ministry right without creating a clash in your home? We have a guest today to tell us how to do it right. Welcome Seno Drapies, good to have you. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I just want to let you know that we have as guest today. Uh, Pastor Prophetess Anita Eta, who is going to be speaking to us today. Good to have you, Deaconess Vivian. I see you right there. Uh, I just want to call this out real quick. Uh, Prophetess Anita, please, woman of God, if you're watching, I know you are, just type a comment. Just type a comment, and then I'll be able to see your video icon and invite you on camera. Hallelujah! Waymaker, promise keeper, my God, yes, seven minutes is good enough for everybody to come on board. So right now we are going to have a time to just introduce our topic of discussion and bring our guests for us to discuss on this very, very important topic. Let me turn this down a little bit. He's touching every life just like today he's about to touch some lives and if you came with questions I know you do maybe asking for a friend or asking for yourself a spouse is in ministry but the other spouse is not in ministry how do you create a balance you know it is a very big challenge out there and we want to make sure we have it right we want to make sure we have it right and do it the right way because it is something that can literally lead uh, a home into a crash. It is something that can literally lead a home into a crash. So uh, we are just uh, going to be discussing on this subject today and we know that the Lord is going to be speaking to us in a tremendous way. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to be speaking to us in a tremendous way. We have as guest today, Pastor Anita Eta who is going to be speaking to us in a mighty way. And uh, just to recap on what we've been having the last uh, uh, four weeks or three weeks, yeah, three weeks in that sort, we've had uh, different conversations about, uh, you know, the message of the gospel. Oh my goodness. We've had a, a conversation on the message of the gospel and we've had so many men of God that have spoken to us and, We've had, uh, you know, Reverend Ishaya Baba from Nigeria, Abuja. Uh, we had Reverend Godlaw from Wales in the UK. We had, uh, uh, we also had uh, 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 Dr. Timothy all the way from here, uh, from us here in Dallas. And they just talked to us about what the message of the gospel is. So please, I know that we were so loaded. We were so blessed with those uh, messages. And uh, it is time for us to put it into practice. It is time for us to put that into practice and begin to walk with the Lord. Uh, I know that the Lord has blessed us so mightily with these servants of God that spoke. But one thing came to a, uh, to, to a clear definition, which is the fact that the gospel is Jesus Christ. The gospel is good news. Good news about 
the saving uh, grace of the Lord, of our Lord God, that came to humanity through the person of Jesus Christ. That is the message of the gospel. It is not anything else. It is not anything else. Everything else is, is uh, an addition. And of course, we have to make sure we focus on the kingdom, on the kingdom agenda first, on the kingdom goal first. And then we would have every other thing. So that is what we are making sure that we keep to that. Uh, I know uh, the woman of God, Pastor Anita, you must be watching right now. Uh, please just type a comment and then I'll be able to bring you on the camera. Uh, as I'm just recapping on what we had the previous editions of the program. We are going to have a long conversation today. It's 10 minutes gone. I was hoping to have had her at this time because I know she has a lot to deliver. And uh, so uh, definitely uh, we are going to be bringing her on camera. Uh, uh, then we would be able to dive into the conversation right away. So definitely please. Let's get uh, ourselves ready. Like I said, if you have questions, just get those questions ready. Begin to, you know, just begin to uh, type them in. Just begin to keep them uh, ready because we are going to be uh, bringing up those questions to her as soon as possible. And uh, we would be able to, to get answers from her as she would uh, give us the answers according to somebody who is experienced. I'm just uh, communicating with her to get her on uh, that we may be able to to uh, work together and bring her on the camera. And then uh, we would be able to bring her on the camera. So definitely it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great evening. I know you all are ready. Uh, we all are ready for her and she is going to be uh, doing a great thing for us tonight. Amen. 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 And uh, it's always going to be a great time because the people that come on this platform are people that are loaded, are people that are so loaded, they are so uh, rich in content. And it's about content, it's not about uh, quantity, amen. It's about content, it's not about quantity. Uh, it's about quality and I believe that we are in for quality tonight. And our guest is just warming up. You know, sometimes when you have a delicious meal... Uh, it's good to wait a little bit because the longer you wait, the, the higher the appetite will grow. <laughs> the higher the appetite will grow and when the appetite grows more, then uh, we are able to be able to go in there and just devour everything that is coming. <laughs> so our guest is, is, is setting some things up. We are just chatting right here and we should be able to have her bring, uh, bring her on camera uh, pretty soon. Good evening to you. Welcome on board. I see uh, uh, Sister Sylvine Gam, uh, Lady, uh, of course, uh, Minister Ekwopi. Welcome on board. B. Azingwi, uh, Mama Susie. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, Lady Mercy Tabor. Of course, uh, there you are. Uh, woman of God, Prophetess Anita is right here in the house. Amen. Glory to God. It's good to have you join us at this point. I'm going to try to bring her on the camera as soon as possible so we can have plenty of time to talk tonight. We can have plenty of time to talk tonight because of what the Lord is going to do. Uh, we know that uh, this is a very sensitive topic. There's even one of those questions in there. If the husband says no to what you want to do, but what that is what the Lord wants you to do, how do you manage that? We have so many women in ministry out there, and this is very important for us to get this uh, out and get it right. Uh, uh, good to have you all that are joining at this point. Uh, woman of God, uh, uh, Pastor Anita, I see your comment. I see your comment. But I do not see your video icon. I don't know if you're watching from a laptop. Sometimes it, it does that. I don't know for some reason. It's not permitting me to bring you on the camera. Probably the laptop or the device. Or if you're watching from maybe a phone or something. Then just back out real quick. And then come back in. It happened last week with Dr. Timothy. So he went out of the video and then came back in. And he was able to let me bring him on the camera. Uh, sorry for that. Our time is going down. But we are going to make it up. We are going to make it up. Because I know the whole world is ready to listen to this uh, subject of conversation today. We are discussing today wife in ministry, but husband is not in ministry. 
How do you get it right? How do you manage it and get it right? That is so important. And of course, the next week we are going to be having another great woman of God who will be talking still in line of uh, women in ministry. And she'll be telling us about, you know, as a pastor's wife, you know, a lot of times pastors before they start a church, before they, 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 they get, they get into pastoring, where that posted, there you are. Woman of God is now on camera. I'll bring her on camera right now. You know, a lot of times pastors go to Bible college and get training, but then they start a church and the wife did not get any of this training. So how does she balance up? How does she catch up? How does she meet up with the expectations of the ministry, not having gone to a former Bible college? So how does she prepare? Our guest is coming on camera right now, and we are going to be moving straight into the subject of conversation. There you are. Yes. Welcome on board, woman of God. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Amen. Oh, Good to see yeah. you looking as beautiful as always. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist. Oh, Amen. 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 I just want to let you all know out there, if I was going to throw a million dollars right now and ask you guys to guess her age, yes. nobody is going to win that million dollars. So let's not even go that round. Well, Welcome I have a boy. few daughters in the house. I have a few daughters in the house and they know my age. But other than that, yes. <laughs> all right. Amen. That grace upon you is really amazing. Amen. Amen. Just to let us know, for those who know, this is the uh, elder sister of Bishop Victor Balinga. It's a great name in Cameroon. And so those of you watching, you'd know. Uh, welcome on board, woman of God. Good to have you. you. What is what is it like at your corner today? Well, I'm in Indiana right now. I think most people watching are going to be surprised because I live in Dallas. But I am in, in Indiana for some business. And the weather, as you know, is colder than Dallas. So it's a little starting to, the winter chills are slowly starting to usher in. All right. All right. Okay. So please stay warm out there in Indiana. Uh, we just want to know, first of all, to know a little bit about you. Tell us uh, about, uh, you know, yourself in light with uh, how did you get your call into ministry and what mm -hmm. ministry exactly are you doing for the Lord? Amen. Amen. Well, amen. first of all, let me just thank you so much for inviting me on this program today. I just want to honor you and your wife. Um, I bless a lot for you guys for what you're doing. Um, talking about who I am, what I do in ministry. Well, my name is Anita. I am born Balinga, that's my middle name. <laughs> and my married name is Eta, so I am Mrs. Eta. I always say that I am a manual wife. My Amen. Boy, yes. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm proud of my people. So anyway, um, I was born into a Christian family, not just a Christian family, but a pastoral family. So my late father was a bishop. My mother is a pastor. So I grew up in the church. Um I was introduced to the Lord from a very, very young age, and I started um, getting involved in formal ministry, first of all, through the music ministry. So the Lord enlisted me into the worship ministry, and many people first knew me as a gospel recording artist. I did that for a number of years, and then the Lord called me into other aspects of ministry, which um, led to my ordination a few years back. So in terms of the type of work that I do now in ministry, um, I was ordained into the, the fivefold office. I functioned mainly in the office of the prophet. But as you know, you know, the Holy Spirit, once you carry the Holy Spirit and you're growing under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I believe that any of us called into any of the fivefold offices, you will begin to manifest. You will manifest an apostolic grace. You will manifest an evangelistic. You will manifest a pastoral, you know, a teaching grace and so forth. But yes, yeah, so that is what I do in ministry right now. Um, our ministry is called Anita Eta Ministries, but under that we have the T2 Mentor Academy, which is the branch of the ministry that mentors um, people in ministry, um, predominantly women. We are focused 
for that aspect of the ministry is mainly women. We have Athena Music Foundation, which is the part that still takes care of the music aspect of what I do, supporting young gospel artists coming up, growing them in, in music, worship ministry. Um, and there's a number of other things we do in ministry, such as the homeless. Some of you may have seen on our Facebook pages. We have homeless ministry. We have orphans and widows ministry and so forth. So I'll leave it at that. But I love oh. to teach what I do a lot of these days is really teaching because I believe that the body of Christ is spiritually deficient of yeah. so many things. And so I believe that we really need to teach above all else in this dispensation. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Thank you for that wonderful uh, introduction, telling us a little bit more about you. And then we come into all this call into the ministry, Anita Eta ministry, doing teaching, doing uh you know music and all those calls that you know the lord has called upon you the question i want to ask it is uh is it possible for the lord to call a spouse a wife into the ministry into this public ministry and mm -hmm. not call the husband you know in other words is it is it is it ever possible and maybe you prove you show us a few examples maybe biblical or in our society where the woman is called into mm -hmm. the public ministry and the man is kind of a background is it is that possible is that something that is even possible with the lord to do or yes. if the lord has to call he calls both he, mm -hmm. he just let us know if it is possible i will start off by saying yes but i'm gonna end up saying no <laughs> so okay. let me explain why i say that um, I will start off by saying yes God can call a woman into ministry and not necessarily call the husband so for example we have Holder prophet prophetess Holder in the Bible is a good example um, um, we, we even have a prophetess Anna who prayed and ushered in the birth of Christ the Bible refers to her as the prophetess Anna but simply refers to her husband so for me that is an indication that he may not have been in public ministry right it's not conclusive mm -hmm. but it's just interesting that the bible refers to her as prophet anna but her husband holder in the case of prophetess holder the bible actually tells us that he did something with garments so it looks like he was kind of like in some type of business um profession he was in some type of secular profession and yet she was a prophetess so yes yeah. yeah so those are a couple of examples that i can just give you know off the bat so i would say initially that yes god can call a woman into public ministry and and leave the husband doing a secular job but i will end up by saying no in in the sense that when god calls a woman into ministry the bible says that the two become one right mm -hmm. and so i believe that god's intention is that even when he calls a woman into public ministry because the two become one it should be where god works with both of them and even though the man like in the case of my husband who is an executive in corporate america he understands the call upon my life he participates in some aspects of the call so indirectly mm -hmm. yes you end up in a situation where the spouse is is involved in the ministry somehow it, it should get to that place i know that there are many examples out there in the world where it doesn't get to that where the mm -hmm. two may be struggling and they remain disconnected but it really should get to a, a point where because the two are one even if the woman is the one who is in in the front of public ministry the man should still be involved but can god call just the woman into public ministry yes wow wow thank you for that and uh, and i think this is a wake-up call to somebody out there uh, maybe a woman or a man you know who may be sitting because this i, I have called it a wife is in, into ministry i think a better way would have been a spouse so we could yes. balance it. it could be the other way the man or the woman mm -hmm. but in case you're thinking you know this thing that the lord has called me my wife is not really standing by me she is more of a secular i wanted a woman that will really stand by me so you're letting us know tonight that it is possible that the lord could call you to be in that public place and the spouse yes. is more of a reserve and background kind of person that is a possibility yes it is a possibility yes we even have women, other women such as Deborah, right? The wife yes. of Lapida. Yes. We have JL. Mm. Those are examples in the Bible that, you know, God 
the Bible shows us that God used them powerfully in ministry, but we don't mm -hmm. see their husbands doing ministry. Yes, yes. Yeah, so right now, I've given four examples, right? We have Anna, yes. we have Hulda, we have Dia, we have Deborah. And I'm sure if we search some more, we would find others in the Bible. Perfectly, definitely, yes. definitely. All right. But we Thank even you look for... at Esther, you know, God used Esther in the lineage of birthing Christ, even before Christ David, right? Yes. But we look at Boaz. Boaz was a businessman. Yes, that's talking yes. about Ruth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Ruth. Sorry, Ruth, not Esther. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. But as a matter of fact, Esther is another example. Mm -hmm. Esther is yes. even a more powerful example of what yes. we're talking about. Because yes. Esther's ministry was to save the children of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. From destruction in a particular time. But she was married to an ungodly king. She was married to an unbeliever, actually. So you even get situations such as those. So in my case, for example, my husband is a believer. He loves the Lord. He understands what, what he's doing and why he's supporting me. But if we take the case of Esther, she was married to King Xerxes, who did not even really know the Lord. Yes. But Esther's example is a successful example of how a woman can be in public ministry. God can use her to do mighty things for the kingdom. And she has an unbelieving husband who even ends up backing the ministry mm -hmm. that she was doing. Which that is why my doing. answer to you was initially yes, but in the end I would say no. Because mm -hmm. you see that because Esther was married to King Xerxes, God ends up putting in King Xerxes' heart to support the things that were in Esther's um, heart. Exactly. That were to, to, to help accomplish her ministry. Yeah. So we all right. all end up as Esther. When, yes. Even though we may start with just the woman being in ministry, I, I believe that it is in the plan of God that the husband will come along, even if he is not saved. Okay. All right. We are going to touch on that part of saved and not saved because that's a whole subject on its own. <laughs> yes. uh, the biggest challenge with uh, women, uh, well, uh, this is just an example from what I know, from what I gather, is managing the three, the three assignments. You have right. feet, you have the husband, and you have the call. How yes. do you, as a woman, call into ministry? How do you manage the kids, the husband, and the call? <laughs> Well, first of all, I would say that it is by the grace of God because there's nothing. We all know, anybody who's listening to this broadcast, if you're saved, you know that it is not by might, not by power, right? But by the Spirit, says the Lord. So first of all, we have to be submitted to the guidance of the Holy Spirit because if we're not, then it can be very demanding. It can be very confusing. It can even be very chaotic. Amen. Oh. But if you're submitted to the Holy Spirit, I, I'm here to say that it can actually become easy. Because there is an order, right? The order of God is always God first, right? Yes. So we will love our, the Lord our God first before our fellow human beings. So it is God that we love first. So we put God ahead of everything. Now, we need to understand that ministry is different to God. Doing ministry hmm. does not necessarily mean that you are ministering to God. You can be doing mm. ministry and Throw not more light minister on that. to God. You get Throw more light on that. So yes. as women in ministry, we have to be able to understand the difference, right? And so mm. when it comes to the hierarchy within the family, let me also start by saying that the family is our first ministry. So when mm. you put God first, the second place in that hierarchy becomes my family. So whether it be my husband or my children, they become my first ministry, as in my first public ministry. Because the Bible, Paul is even saying to Timothy, right? He, he, he breaks down an overseer, a deacon in the church. You should be a, a man of one wife and so forth. That is a biblical principle. You know, when the Bible talks about, even when the Bible talks about a man, for example, right? It's not necessarily because he's only talking about males, right? In Christ, there's no male or female, no Gentile or Jew. Amen. Yes. It yes. is a biblical principle that Paul was, was teaching us. So we need to be able to understand that we need to have our homes in order. That's what Paul was telling Timothy. We need to have our own homes in order. That is our first ministry. Before I go out there as a woman to begin to teach other people, 
I need to make sure that I have availed myself first to minister to my husband. Mm. Because my husband came before my children. And I think there's a lot of women that are missing it out there because they begin to put their children before their husbands. God gave us the husband first. And the two became one. The Bible doesn't say that the, the woman and the children became one. So mm. after God, the hierarchy becomes the husband and then the children. So we have that hierarchy before we can leave the home to go minister outside. So I have no business. Like right now that I'm sitting here, my husband went out of town. He's actually going to come in, walk in anytime now. I have his food on the counter in the kitchen. Mm. So we have to make sure that we take care of the home front first. Because if the home front is not right, if the foundation is not right, what can the righteous do? Mm. What is our foundation as women in ministry? It is the home. If you're fighting with your husband every day, fighting with your children every day, then when, how do you spend time in the presence of the Lord? How and when? If the peace of God is not in your house, then I don't understand how you can even find intimacy with God. So we have to focus and get that order right. If we can get our husband aligned, if we can get our children aligned, if we as a family can be in alignment, with the call that is upon the life of the woman in ministry, then ministry outside of the home starts to become easy, even mm. if the spouse is not in ministry. Because then when you have to step out, your spouse understands. When you're hanging around with male pastors, your spouse understands. Because your, your marriage bond is so strong that your spouse is comfortable with you going out there and doing what you have to do. There is love, there is peace, there is trust in the marriage. If all of those are missing because you have not paid attention to the home front, then it's going to cause problems outside. Hmm. Wow, my goodness. You just opened a whole can of worms and I, I, I could barely get everything down but this is so powerful that i need to summarize this for for just somebody who maybe is just getting in right now the question was how do you manage a home you know as a woman in ministry the children the the husband and the ministry and yeah. and, and you said you started by saying it categorically clear that it is a work of grace it is yeah. not something that any man should boast of. It comes by God's grace. And I think that's important for everybody to know that it's not going to be by your ability. You must trust God's grace to be able to do this. And then you went on to say that it is possible for you to get busy mm -hmm. doing ministry without actually ministering unto the Lord. This is, this is mind-blowing because this is just something that it is so possible to do it that you are actually rejoicing and mm -hmm. getting busy jumping from one uh, a plane to the next from one city to the other doing ministry without actually ministering unto the lord mm -hmm. and you said the ministry unto the lord comes by you first of all recognizing hierarchy and you yes. said the hierarchy is in this order god first husband mm -hmm. or family and then the ministry Amen. why why would you have this hierarchy? You went on to say it, that it is because our foundation is the home. Is the home. The home must be made right before mm -hmm. you can even pray right. This yeah. is this is a Amen. mic drop right here. This is so you're telling the woman or the man out there who hasn't put his home together that the reason he could be struggling in prayer and unable to even preach a sound message mm -hmm. is because the home is not in order. Yes. Leave, leave the, leave the, if you know what, if you have a church or a registered ministry like I do, look, if your home is not in order, you may actually need to take a sabbatical. You may hmm. need to take a sabbatical and come fix your home. Because you know what, that spouse who is not in ministry will never align behind what you're doing in ministry if they don't respect what you're doing in the house. As a woman, you are continually dishonoring your husband. As a matter of fact, if your husband who is not in ministry does not see you 
ministering unto the Lord. If he doesn't see you in your prayer closet, if he doesn't see your strength of character, when hmm. something upsets you in the house, you immediately start to quarrel and you swear words and you know, you are, you are aggressive, you are unforgiving, you're paying back people. If your husband is watching you do those things, if he's watching the way you treat his mother and his sisters, and you're fighting with your in-laws all the time, hmm. you pick up a Bible and you want to go preach, trust God. me, your husband will not stand behind the public ministry that you were doing. He has to be able to respect you as a wife and mother within the family unit he has to have watched you go through challenging situations and seen your christian character and then he will honor and respect what is upon your life and then he will stand behind you when you have to go out and do because what you go out to do is simply you replicating what you have already successfully done in the family you've successfully done that with your husband with your children with your mother-in-law with your father-in-law with that sister-in-law that brother-in-law if you cannot fix those fronts you will struggle for your spouse who is not a ministry to stand behind you my god my, why is why is sister emmanuel <laughs> emmanuel Abime, she told me evangelist you have been fair we haven't seen women on this platform and here we are on fire today this is Amen. just the first day this is going to be a month of explosion this is Amen. so good this is really really an exposition of our minds and i believe that transformation is coming up today and, and people's people's ministries are going to be transformed in, in, in uh, such yeah. a mighty way. Uh, thank you so much. Now you touch on the issue of uh, the woman. You your character must first be proven and tested at home. Mm -hmm. the, the man must see how you react to situations. The man must see how you control anger. He must see how you talk to in laws and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's push this a little bit and make the waters a little bit muddy here and get personal. Mm -hmm. In a situation where you know you're right. And your husband, those moments come. I'm married. Those moments yeah. Oh, come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you handle the situations where things are getting out of hand and you know that this is supposed to be my right and you should fight back? How do you handle that situation? Because the woman may feel like I'm right in this case and that's why I have the reason to, you know, break the glasses and go wide. But that can now be used against you, against your ministry, like your pastor and this what you're doing. So how do you manage such a situation where things get out of hand and you're right or whatsoever, you feel that you're being trampled upon and how do you keep yourself together? Okay. Thank you for that question. I like how you said, if you feel that you're being trampled upon, how do you keep yourself together? Let me start from there, right? Yes. Women, wives, please hear me well. The ladies from our ministry who are here have heard me say this to them a thousand times. Unless a seed dies. <laughs> you see, women in ministry, you must die first. If you have not died, you have no business being in ministry. My God. You must die. You must die. Because when you die, it's, not gonna, it's no longer going to be about my right. You see, when Jesus went on the cross and died, it wasn't because he was stupid. When people spat mm. on him and they put the crown of thorns on him and they dragged him and did all those things, it wasn't because he was stupid. See, Jesus is our ultimate example. If we're going to do ministry, we must see how Jesus did ministry. You must lay yourself down and die such that you are not reacting just mm. because you are right does not mean that you we, people need to see an adverse reaction from you so as a woman in ministry as a wife you must first die but the other thing i want to say about that is okay you are right maybe you're right maybe your husband is a drunk maybe he even takes drugs right maybe he's you know he's i mean he plays the fool for one of a better word right and you yeah. are right and you're doing everything correctly and you feel like this is too much. I can't take it anymore. Let me just read a couple of Bible verses for us very quickly. First Corinthians 11, three says, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband. So even hmm. when you are a woman in ministry, your head remains 
your husband. The Bible does not say the head of every wife who is not in ministry is the husband. And then those of us who are in ministry, our head is no longer the husband. No. So we need to get this hierarchy thing right. It says that, and the head of Christ is God. So again, we see another type of hierarchy here, right? Where yes. the man, the man's head is Christ. The wife's head is the husband. The Bible doesn't say is her good husband or is her saved husband. Mm. Or her husband who behaves himself or is her husband who does not get drunk. No, 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 no. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible simply says the head of a wife is her husband. There are no qualifiers to this verse. Mm. So My what God. does that mean? That is why if you have not died as a wife, you will struggle because you will not be walking in obedience to 1 Corinthians 11.3. What does this mean? Now we know that the head of the man is Christ. So when the man is not doing right, where do you go? You go to Christ. Mm. You take it to Christ. You don't rebel can... in the home. My God. You don't disrupt the order that God has put because you see, People of God, we must first be obedient to the word of God and then God is going to begin to fight our battles. So if you have already messed up the hierarchy that God gave you by dishonoring your husband simply because he is not in ministry, then, then it becomes difficult for God to back you. So you take it to the husband's head who is Christ. The Bible says the head of every man, meaning every type of man, even a madman on the street, his head mm. is Christ. My so, God. woman of God, listen to me. Even if you think your husband is crazy, his head is Christ. You report him to his head. In other words, you go on your knees. You get into mm. prayer and fasting. Every time your husband does something that you don't agree with, regardless of how frustrating it gets, you get on your knees. You talk to his head. You tell Jesus. Mm. So women in ministry, if your husband is not in ministry or wor worse yet, he's not even saved, you're going to have to learn how to become his primary intercessor. Mm. I said that your first ministry was your home. So let me even take us to the book of Genesis. A woman is a helper of the man. So if you are in ministry and that man is misbehaving, you need to help him. How do you mm. help him? Not by answering him back, not by dishonoring him. You help him by becoming his key intercessor. So you start to intercede day and night for that man. You will intercede until his head chooses to do something about his behavior. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. My God, this is good. <laughs> Dallas, USA, churches, wherever you are, this is a speaker right here. This is a speaker. I don't know if, if you guys are hearing what I'm hearing. This is good. We were asking the question, and, and the comments are just mind-blowing, the things I'm hearing. Hopefully, we'll get time to take those comments. And, and, you know, the question was, how do you handle a situation where you're being trampled upon as a woman? And because you had earlier said you must not react, you know, you must not, you know, speak back. And then we said, but what about where you feel like this is your right? You know, you were on the right, and you deserve a right to talk back and because you were, you were right. So you responded by saying that, Ministry, the, the key to successful ministry, I think that's what Reverend Song just reiterated there. The key oh, okay. to successful ministry, Reverend Jesse Song, he said the key to successful ministry is for you to die. Yes. The word die, I underlined it three times. You must die you must for die. you to be able to succeed in ministry. Mm -hmm. And you say when you truly die, you are no longer reactive. That is the evidence of, the evidence that you're dead is your exactly. inability to react. You know, if you're still reacting, then probably you fainted you or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, you're not yes. dead. But the, the Bible says, unless a seed falls to the ground, which you quoted, and dies. Nice. It's not just the falling to the ground, it must also die. Mm -hmm. So that's what you brought out categorically clear. The seed must fall to the ground and die. 
So you said the woman must die for her to be able to do ministry successfully. And then secondly, she must remember, according to you quoted 1 Corinthians there, uh, 3, that the, the head of the woman is the man. And the hierarchy, according to how, how the Bible says, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of the man is Christ. Yes. So if you feel that you're being treated wrongly as a wife, then go to the head of the husband and report him to him. That is to Christ. Go to the head of the husband and report. So you go to a higher hierarchy and mm -hmm. report the, the person who is doing wrong to you. So the yeah. way to treat, to, to, to respond to it is not for you to talk bad and make the house unbearable. It's to go to the head of the man who is Christ and report to him that your subject is misbehaving and Christ will take care of him. That's that is right. so powerful. And then you ended by saying that you must be the primary intercessor for your man. This is mind blowing because we can get busy with ru running three hours every Friday night. We can get busy with running, uh, flying out of state to go organize a revival, three days revival in California or in New Mexico. But we have not spent time to intercede for the man. Our right. primary all night must be for the man as a woman in ministry. That is so powerful. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I wanted to just recap that really quick. Now, let's push it further a little bit in a situation where, you know, the Bible says, having done all to stand, therefore stand yeah. then. So you've done all of this, and it just turns out that things are not moving right. You've done everything, and you're still having a challenge, you know. So how then do you manage a spouse who, you know, number one, you know, does not agree with your calling into ministry? <laughs> you, you've been a, you've been a submissive wife. Mm -hmm. You've you you you've we've you've done the right things that you're supposed to do, but he just he just looks at this your ministry thing as a clown and doesn't agree with you as a minister. That's a, that's the part A of it, and then I'll bring the part B. How do you manage a situation where your husband doesn't believe in your call to ministry? Well, the Bible says that when a man's ways please God, right, he will cause yes. even his enemies to be at peace with him. So. It goes back to the woman has to, to focus on pleasing God. You have to look. See, sometimes marriage is the, the, the processing chamber that kills the flesh of you, the woman who is in ministry. So sometimes if God has not, if you're praying and God has not changed that man and the man is not supporting your ministry, Frankly speaking, you have to go back to God and talk to God because sometimes it could be that there are things about you that God is still wanting to kill, that he's mm. still wanting to break, that he's still wanting to process because when a man's ways please God, he will curse even his enemies, much less your husband, to be at peace with you. I mean, frankly speaking, I can answer this question in many different ways because I can even take it to the dimension of were you even called into ministry outside of the home? Mm. We can sit here all night on just this question because there are also some women that Ooh. went into ministry. We have to even go back to why did you get into ministry? How did you get into ministry? <laughs> what is the timing of when you were called for ministry? And is this the season that God ex expects you to be in ministry? So there are people who have been called, but they have not yet been sent. And hey! so could be the wife that God Jesus has called Christ. you, but he may not have sent you. So it may not be in this season that God is wanting your, your public ministry to come into manifestation in the forefront. Maybe this is a season when you're still supposed to sit quietly in the house and just minister to your husband and children. And God may even be using that man to cause you to stay in the cave. <laughs> My God. So these are these things are very we have that's why I started off by saying that you have to, if you're a woman in ministry, you and the Holy Spirit have to be, as we say in French, cole cole, because these are things that you have to be so sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying about your situation and why that particular in why your particular situation is like that. There is no one unique answer for every woman. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and give prescriptions. 
But I know that my situation is not exactly like every other woman who is in ministry and their spouse is not in ministry. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm, every mm -hmm. woman needs to go back. In, you have to go back to your secret place and say, God, show me. Am I even supposed to be going public? Let me share my own story. When I was a, a new wife, I was, my husband met me doing ministry. At, at the point that my husband married me, first of all, he knew that I came from a family that was heavily in ministry. At the point that he married me, I already had been involved in, I believe, one album recording, one gospel music album recording. I, uh -huh. we, we used to travel and sing and do stuff. He already knew that I was in ministry. So people's cases are different. Some people get saved and, get, and then they answer the call while they are already married, right? In my case, uh -huh. it was before I was married. So my husband kind of knew already that I was in ministry. But even with that, I, I moved from the UK to the USA. So I left the ministry that I was doing in the UK and came to the USA to get married. I stayed home for some years without doing public music ministry. Hmm. I focused on my marriage for the first few years. Hmm. And then I had my son and we began to raise our son together. And then we had my daughter. Those who have followed my music ministry through the years can attest to the fact that there were very few times where you saw me travel. Anyone who is here who has known me and followed my ministry for years, you know what I'm talking about. You hardly saw me travel for ministry. You see, every married woman in ministry needs to go before God and say, Father God, give me wisdom. For my particular situation, with my particular husband, with my particular circumstances of my and my children, God, what should I do in this season? Like I said, I cannot stand here and give one prescription to every woman in ministry. For me, I sought the Lord and I stayed home. I only went out to minister in song when it, when it was come, come it, it, it worked with my my husband and my children and my family circumstances so it was mm. not disruptive to my family i did that in my early years it allowed my husband to begin to also understand more about who i was in ministry what i represented it allowed even the lord to begin to talk to my husband and show him more about my calling and mm. i can stand here and say I honor my husband because I remember when, I, when we recorded my first um, gospel music video for the song, if you go on YouTube, my song called Ajon. My husband came. As a matter of fact, the first recording that we did in the studio was poor. My husband took, took it, listened to it. He said, no, no, this is not good. We need to find someone that can help you do the bass better. My husband was the one who connected us to Andre Manga, the legendary Cameroonian uh, bassist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. We, my husband came with me. We, ha we did a meet meeting with Andre. I still remember in a hotel in Anaheim, California. He talked to Andre about how to, what we would like to see. He paid the money. Mm. Now, if I had just jumped into marriage and the very next day I was running out to go sing here, sing there, sing there. Mm. If I did not allow time for my husband and I you see, when you want to, when you even want God to do something for you, you have to worship God. The Bible says that deep calleth unto deep, even with God. When you want something from God, when you want God to bless you and back you up, what do we do? We worship him. We spend time with him. We stay in the secret place. We connect with God in intimacy. After we have done that, it becomes easy for, for us to begin to receive things from God. Marriage is the same. Marriage is a mystery of the relationship between Christ and the church. Mm. So if you want your husband to back you and support you, if he doesn't see, understand your call, focus on intimacy with your husband. Build your relationship with your husband first. We do that with Christ, don't we? Yes, we do. When you spend time with the Lord, he blesses you. He shows you the secret things. He gives you gifts and blessings that he doesn't give other people. Mm. We saw men of God change the heart of God in the Bible. Why? Because they were men after God's heart. Yes. Abraham. Yes. 
people like that. Why? Because they had a strong relationship with God. Marriage is simply a reflection of the, 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 the relationship between Christ and the church. So we have to approach our husbands the same way. He doesn't believe in your calling. Slow down. Mm. Wow. My God. Yeah, I think you got muted. I think you got muted. I don't know. Can you hear? I think you got muted right there. Let me grab a connection. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Go ahead and grab it while I recap this. <laughs> this is, <laughs> at some point, I literally could not take notes because every statement was, was, was loaded. You know, every statement was so loaded and so powerful the way she brought it out. And the question I presented to her was, uh, you know, in a case where you feel you've done everything and you're obedient woman, submissive woman, you've respected your husband, and then you're into ministry, but your husband just doesn't support your ministry. He doesn't mm -hmm. care about, he doesn't believe in your ministry. And that's when she gave us this response. She said, sometimes marriage is the processing chamber of killing the flesh of a woman in ministry. <laughs> Look, I saw this comment like five times <laughs> on, on the comment section. This yeah. is, I don't know if this came from a book, but this is, this is, this is a statement that should not escape your mind as a woman. It's the Holy Ghost. It, it, it is, it is the Holy Spirit. It, 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 he is just amazing. Just sometimes marriage, yes, sometimes marriage is the processing chamber of killing the flesh of a woman in ministry. So sometimes that struggle you're going through with that man who just doesn't believe, he's just a thorn to your flesh. Mm -hmm. God could be using that as a processing chamber. Because nobody else would do that to you outside and you would take it. So when God succeeds to process you from your home, when this yeah. happens to you outside, you've already gone through it at home. And at that time, you're a dead person, just like you said, a dead person doesn't react. So yeah. marriage sometimes is a processing chamber for what God wants to do. And you said, if you find yourself in such a situation, another thing you would do is you want to check back with the Lord. Did he really call you? And if yes, he called you, is this the right timing for you to Amen. go into public ministry? Or do you need to wait? Because you could be called, <laughs> you might have been called, but have not been sent. Powerful. This is, this is mind blowing. You might have been called, but have not been sent. This is so important because so many of us misunderstand the two. God calls you, but he takes time to send you. Because between the calling and the sending is the time called processing, preparation. Exactly. And so you got, you got to go through all of that. So many have been called and immediately they were called, they started running. My father, Reverend Golov Nkwele, he would say that uh, because somebody was called and he said, your father in the house oh, called John, go get me a coke. Because you and, could then be and then John ran away and brought a coke. You, and, then he, and, he said, and then the father, father called the Mary. Hey, John, Mary, come to me. me. And then Mary he ran away immediately running. to go get a coke. But the calling for Mary was not for Mary to get a coke. So it is the same thing we do in ministry sometimes. God calls us and we don't even ask, Father, what do you want me to do? We immediately run to go and do the work. So you That's might right. want to check, is this the right time for you to go out and do it? And then you ended by saying that, don't be in a rush to do ministry as a woman, as a wife. Take your time first to win your spouse before rushing out there. This is so important. Take time to win the man and wait in the house. Wait and win him over. You gave examples of how you waited and built your home first. Amen. And that solid foundation is now turning around to pay off by your spouse supporting your ministry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I just want to plead with you right now. Uh, we have two minutes to one hour. I told you it was going to be a one hour session. Do we have permission to go on? We haven't touched about three more, four questions. Yes, what's mine? We can continue. Uh, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we can pick up those comments that are coming. I saw Reverend Song writing a list of, <laughs> it's just a whole lot going on in the comment section right there. We will pick up on those uh, in a moment. The next thing I want to find out, you've talked about how to handle a man who doesn't believe he, does just, he just doesn't believe that you are called. You've given us good prescriptions. What about the other part of it is, well, he agrees that you are called, but he's never there for your meetings. You know, people are asking you, your husband never comes for your meetings. The man doesn't, he doesn't disagree that you're called. He accepts your call. He even, you know, gives you money to go run your event, but he just never comes. 
How do you handle, what could be the cause of that and how do you handle that? They've never seen him for your programs. They've never seen him stand by you, but he doesn't disagree with you. What could be the cause and how do you take care of that? You know, for me as a wife in ministry, first of all, if you're a woman listening to me and that is your situation, you need to first of all start by, the Bible says that despise not the days of humble beginnings. You need to start first of all by being grateful that he's supporting because there's people whose husbands don't even believe in the call and or husbands who are being disruptive to their call you mm. see as as christians we need to get to a place where we understand that for, for for me to have a husband who accepts that i am called that is already the work of god right there now every woman has to look at her unique situation right it's just like amongst us women we always say one one woman's husband may give her roses another one's husband may not give her roses the one whose mm -hmm. husband may not give roses may, may help her do the dishes you get what i'm saying yeah so it, it's all in your perspective as a wife in ministry so you have to start with gratitude god i thank you that my husband understands that i am called god i thank you that he's supporting me in whatever ways that he is supporting me but the third thing that I want to share to help some women out there, and in like, let me take my case in, in, in particular. My husband is a senior executive in corporate America. The level of responsibility that he carries is not such that I can take him with me every place that I'm going to go minister. Mm. Through the years, when he's able to come with me, he comes. When he's not able... It's just like I just, I just said that he's been out of, he's just walking in, right? So mm -hmm. you have to understand. Remember that we, the women, are helpers, not the mm -hmm. other way around. Yes, yes. And even when you are a woman in ministry, you still remain your husband's helper. So mm. I still need to be able to support my husband. I need to be able to understand that he, he carries a heavy load in what he does in the corporate world. And he needs to be able to rest. He barely has time even to rest for himself. So I now have to be understanding. And if I show him understanding for what he needs, he will also do his best when he's able to come with me to come with me. But I cannot go pick a fight mm. because he must follow me everywhere I go. Remember in heaven, there's not going to be husband and wife anymore. God called you. You answered the call of God, first of all. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you need to defend that call, regardless of whether your husband is coming with you or not. God will ask you about whether you did what he told you to do. Other people supporting you is a bonus. There's something my spiritual father always said to me. I remember, especially around the time of my ordination, he would always say to me that when you get in, the more you get into ministry, you're going to understand that people will even leave you. You know, all of us who run either a ministry or a church, people come, people go. Today, they think you're wonderful because you blessed them, you prayed for them. The next day, they're gossiping about you or they've left the church because you're no longer missing their need. Look, something I learned from my spiritual father, you and God is enough. For ministry mm. that is the first thing we, you must have in your head you and god is all you need to start with so your frame of mind has to begin there to say father god as long as you called me as long as you are backing me god never sends without providing hallelujah God never sends you without backing you. He, God is the one who is responsible for the resources you need, for the relationships you need in, for, for, in order for the ministry to be successful. In this day and age, we have a lot of young people in ministry who simply because their motives are wrong. When your motives are wrong, you're going to be comparing, oh, how come this other uh, woman in ministry, she and her husband, they're always uh, preaching together, moving together, doing every mind. It's not like, no. By the way, our assignments are different. You see, if I was fighting with my husband because he doesn't come with me every time I go minister, 
I would not be here helping other women whose cases are like mine. Yes. You see, a woman whose husband is a pastor or an apostle or a prophet or whatever, they are called to minister to a different type of audience. Hmm. God has called me to minister to another type of audience. All of my unique circumstances are exactly what I need in order to be who God wants me to be. So we need to get comfortable with how our own circumstances are. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be contented in every situation. Yes. So rather than go pick a fight with your spouse, woman of God listening to me, celebrate the things that your spouse is able to do for you. My husband does amazing things for me. I will not exchange him for no one else. Mm. It's a blessing in my life. I enjoy Hallelujah. things that many women out there don't enjoy. I just don't even want to go into some of those things right now. Mm. But he wow. blesses me in ways that those who know my life, they know. Mm. I am a blessed woman because of my husband. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah to that. Wow. Powerful. So we should not compare. Yes. Powerful. Thank you for throwing that out. You, you, know, you know, you just mentioned it there, do not compare and, you know, accept and be, be appreciative. Thank God for the fact that he is even there. He acknowledges that you have a ministry and all of that. Uh, the, the other side of it, just to stretch it a little bit, how do you respond to your followers who keep asking you, where is your husband? How do you respond to the people who are asking you in the ministry we've never seen your husband and you know, people, people, Reverend Song said last time, people, is, people are always the problem. He said, yeah. the problem was not David who killed Goliath. The problem was not Saul who had killed thousands. The problem was the women that started singing the song. So sometimes the people, the, the people are the problem. How do you respond to the people who are asking? And you know, information can start filtering and people start spreading. This thing that we never see her husband, are you sure she's really called? They don't know that the man is there sending money, renting the hall. They don't know the other details. Even if you yeah. stand and say, my husband sends his support, he sends, but they, they just have, what do you respond to those people who just, how does she respond? Let me put it. How does she make the people know that the husband is really supporting, even though not present? I actually don't think that a woman in ministry owes the people an explanation for where the husband is. Let me start by saying that because hmm. the people caused Moses not to enter the promised land. And so every woman in ministry, or not even women, even men in ministry, one of the key things that anybody in ministry needs to understand is that you cannot follow the people. Hmm. If you follow the people, you will get into trouble. You don't do things because the people want you to do things. You do things because God wants you to do things. So it goes back to the first person you are ministering to is God, not even the people. Hallelujah. We are called to minister to God first. And if God gave me these circumstances, if he allowed me to be in these circumstances, if he has blessed me within these circumstances, I am contented in this situation. Therefore, to start with, I don't feel that I owe any kind of justification for why my husband is not with me. But in my case, People know my husband because sometimes he, he comes with me. It just depends on, on um, for example, the last time that Pastor Mark did a marriage conference, my husband and I actually went there to support Pastor Mark with that and, and shared, you know, stuff and all. But times when he's not able, he's not able, right? I don't follow mm -hmm. what people would think or in, in that sense. But yeah, as a wife, every wife, let's be real, right? You mm. love your husband to be there with you. Yes. Right? Regardless of the people. But you have to just look at the, the, the reality of your situation. Just like everything else you do in your life, deal with your own reality. If you don't have enough money in your house, don't buy that Mercedes. Mm. Regardless of whether somebody else is buying a Mercedes or somebody else is asking you why you haven't bought a Mercedes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So we, yes. we, have to, uh, we have to approach the spouse um, relationship in the same way. Be comfortable in who you are in Christ in your own calling, in your own marriage, in your own circumstances. If someone asks you politely, hey, you just, like I just said here, right, that he traveled, he just walked by actually here at the door, he just came back from out of mm -hmm. town, you know, that's it. If people choose not to believe you or they think you're lying or they gossip, look, as a man or woman of God, we have to get beyond 
gossip bothering us or people giving their own interpretations mm. bothering us. It's really about as long as you're doing the right thing by God, that is all that matters. Wow. Powerful, powerful. And you see, I just threw that question out there and we have Sister Regina confessing right there. Confession is coming out. <laughs> so I used to ask about Pastor Anita's husband. <laughs> So yes. that's powerful. Thank you for bringing that out. And uh, this is really so good. This is really so good. And you said it clearly that do not always try to please people because there's really no amount of explanation you would give that the people would be pleased. You know, it's just a human nature. Even when you explain, they will say, well, that's not enough. There's something mm -hmm. she's not telling us. Even when there is nothing, you're not telling them. So it's just understanding that your primary person to please is the Lord. It's uh, God, yes. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much for that question. Let's get uh, to the next uh, question. This is going to be a little bit muddy and dusty right here. Uh, as a woman in ministry, who do you please first? Your husband or God? In a situation oh, where... question, God. <laughs> no, no, let's get, let's get real. In a situation where you have a program, you have this already set up, and the mom says no, you're not going for this and you, do, you don't have to go for this. You know, I need your time. I need you here. And you explain, honey, but I told you about this. He said, well, I just changed my mind. You're not, you're not going. Who do you obey in that situation? Now, when you give that example, it takes it back to what, we, what I explained earlier that we need to be able to differentiate God versus ministry. Hmm. Every woman in ministry must understand that choice. Are you really choosing between God and your husband or are you choosing between ministry and your husband? If you cannot yeah. tell the difference, you will end up in muddy waters. My God, yes. my God. So for example, if my husband tells me to steal, I will not steal because I'm disobeying God. Yes, yes. But if I have to go minister somewhere and he tells me that he's not comfortable with it, I can choose not to go minister because that is ministry. You see the difference? Mm. But that is where you have to have been following the rest of the things that I've been explaining in the last hour. You should manage your home and your relationship to the point where your husband will not come when you already, like how we already had this program. For example, my husband was traveling out of town. He knew that I was going to be ministering today. You know what I did before I got on here? I called him. He was at the airport in the other city. We talked about when he will land here. I told him that when he lands here, I will be on a, a, a one hour program. He knows. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? So you have yes, to yes. manage all of that. If you're not managing all of that, then you will end up with situations where your husband is saying to you, what are you doing? Why, why hmm. have you been sitting in that room for the last two hours? Oh, by the way, why have you not cooked dinner? Oh, the kids, you haven't changed the, uh, the baby's diaper you're not going anywhere. You, you get, mm. You're going to start having him doing those kinds of things, not necessarily because he's a bad man, but because you are also not handling your business. Mm. You have to show him that honor and respect. So even though he's not the one leading in ministry, I told him what I was doing today. He knows. He knows the timing of it. He understands that when he gets home, I may not be there to open up the door because I have an engagement already. But like I said, I've left put out his food. So if he's able to wait for me to finish this and we have dinner together, fine. If he's really hungry because he's been traveling, he will eat. So wow. it's, it comes back to the women in ministry. Communicate with your husband. Talk to him. Hmm. Build that trust and, and, you know, and understanding. Because if you build the trust and understanding, he's not going to come to you just before you have administration and say, don't go there. If he's doing that, then the problem is not really the ministry. Hmm. Then there's a deeper issue that yes. you need to address, which is why I said your first ministry needs to be building your relationship with your husband and your children. You need to first establish that. If that is not established, the foundation be broken. What can the righteous do? You will keep, the righteous will keep having problems if the foundation is not right. Wow. My goodness. Uh, woman of God, let me, this is out of the box. You talked about your spiritual father. Who is yours? Who is, you're so good. 
And I think a good father begets a good daughter. Who is Amen. your father? And who are, just list three people that speak into your life. Who is your mentor and who, just list three people because you are something else. Who are the three figures that speak into your life? Let's just know. My, the, if I say the three people that speak into my life, the top my three, the top, the top three, just say top three, yeah. or just say, let's say three, just leave three. Yeah, yes. three is fine. My biological father, who passed away three years ago, because okay. he raised me in the way of the Lord, he spoke into my life all the way until he passed. My biological mother is the second one because she still speaks into my life. She, if those who know my mom, my mother is an amazing woman. My hmm. mother herself is in ministry. I watch my mom do ministry and marriage. So I watched a marriage that they held until my dad passed. That was not just a marriage, but also a ministerial couple. So I, I learned that from my parents. And then my spiritual father is Apostle Charles Eno, who some of you listening may know. Oh, wow. That's another wow. person who, and he is all about the kinds of things that I talk about, like dying to self, working on your own character, transformation, spending time in prayer. I learned those, those kinds of things. I learned them from him in, in terms of how you approach ministry. He even told me when, he, when, when God brought him into my life as a leader over me in ministry, one of the first things he emphasized was submission to my husband. Hmm. He brought that up. He does not joke with, he, he has even told me that if your husband does not agree, if I tell you to do anything, your husband does not agree, don't do it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing mm -hmm. that because we need to start identifying some of these good waters because there is so yes. much bad water out there that I think it's really rare mm -hmm. to find the good waters. And thank you for calling out those names. And uh, yes. it's a blessing to us and people can benefit from some of those people and, and get to... Uh, to be blessed and really come out the way you are. You know, this is really so good. You've been so much of a blessing to us tonight. We are just uh, going to, you know, wrap up right here at this point. But one last thing I want you to do is to just, you know, give a final word to women in ministry out there, you know, whose spouses may not be in ministry. You've said everything already, but just give a last word and also pray for us, the audience who are watching at this point, so that we can be become better as we do ministry. Amen. I want to just leave, leave us with a Bible verse, Titus verse chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. This is the, the anchor verse of our ministry, T2 Mentor Academy. T2 actually Mentor Academy stands for Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. The women that I am raising in ministry, this is the, the foundational verse that we use. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderous or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children. You see that? To be self-controlled mm. and pure, to be busy at home. It doesn't just say busy outside the home, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands. Yes, we need to be subject to our husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. I want to leave us with this last Bible verse. It is powerful. We don't even have time to dissect all of this verse right now. But the reason why I wanted to leave us with this, our T2 Mental Academy verse is that it tells us that if we don't do these things, if we are not, you know, reverent, if we are not subject to our husband, if we're not self-controlled, busy at home, so if we don't take care of the home from first, it says so that no one will malign the word of God. Woman of God, listening to me, woman in ministry, whatever ministry you are running around there doing, if you don't take care of these things that Titus chapter 2 verse 3 to 5 is saying, the word of God will be maligned. Your mm. husband will malign the word of God. Your husband will malign the ministry. He would disregard the ministry. So it begins with you getting your own transformation. Forget about your husband. Forget about his weaknesses. Focus on your own transformation. Why is God still allowing that man not to support you? What is God trying to break in you? Focus on that. When you change, God will take care of your husband. 
Uh, mm. After all, it is God's ministry. It is up to God to back that ministry, not you. You have no business going to fight your husband when you don't even own that ministry. The ministry belongs to God. Hallelujah. God is more than capable of defending his own ministry. And if he's not defending what you think is his ministry, then that the ministry you are doing may not even be God's ministry. You may mm. have to examine yourself again. So women in ministry, I want to leave you with this. You have to die. Hallelujah. You yourself have to be transformed. A dead person does not get offended. A dead person does not even notice what people have done, what the husband has done or not done. You must die. But most of all, we are called to honor our husbands. So we must even go beyond just the dying to the point where we can begin to honor that man. Maybe you did not honor him because he was not in ministry. You felt that he doesn't know the Bible like you. Look for ways to honor him and treat him special. Hmm. Esther honored King Xerxes, even though King Xerxes was given to wine. She threw a banquet. She said, I please my Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, that she was humble towards King Xerxes, even though she knew she carried a powerful ministry. Women of God, we must humble ourselves. We must mm. honor our husbands, whether they are in ministry or not, whether they are saved or not. Take care of them. Take care of the home front. Take care of the sexual intimacy front. Take care of the children. Take care of his food. Take care of everything else. You must put that in order. When you put it in order, I will be surprised if he does not honor the ministry. Mm. And if he does not, still does not honor the ministry, then some of you know I do a lot of deliverance. Then maybe there is a demon there that needs to come out. Mm -hmm. I have to throw in a little bit of deliverance yeah. matter in here. <laughs> so with that note, I will leave it at that. You need to become a prayer warrior. Pray, pray, and pray some more. Fast and pray, fast and pray. This kind cometh not, but by fasting and prayer. When you're facing a challenge, woman of God, that you don't know what else to do, you've done everything, fast and pray and pray some more. Talk to God until he fixes the situation because it is not by might nor by power but only by the spirit of god it is a grace it is only by the grace of god if it is not the grace of god trust me you cannot fight that battle yes you cannot yes, yes. i don't have what it takes i'll be the first to say it i'm not perfect i don't sit here and talk because i'm perfect no i sit here because god has helped me ask god Ooh. for wisdom if you're struggling, ask God for wisdom, but you must lay your life down. There's a number of my daughters in the ministry here listening. They know, I tell them this all the time. When I do marriage counseling, I say, I start with you, the woman who has come to me, regardless of what you're telling me that your husband is doing, I deal with you first. Because if we hmm. can get you right, then we can change that home. When God. when God called Mary, Joseph was going to put Mary out. What happened? God had to talk to Joseph to say, don't put her out. So God will validate your ministry to your husband. It was God who told Joseph that he is using Mary to birth the Christ. God will do the same for you, woman of God. Mm. If you're obedient, if you're humble, if you reverence your husband, God will show your husband that, look, don't give her trouble. I am the one using her like he did with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. Man, woman of God, please just go ahead and pray for us. Uh, pray for, just pray as the spirit of your prophetess and as the Lord leads you, just speak. I believe the Lord will be speaking to specific cases tonight. That's why we just cut this right here. You have. I cannot I mean, even see the way my phone is set up. I have not even been able to see any comments. So I'm just. Yeah. Talking. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you definitely see a bunch pray. of it in there. But just pray for us and just let the Lord speak through you and just address whatever the Lord wants to speak tonight and just bless somebody. Oh Jesus, we come in your presence tonight to just bless you, God. Father, we come. We humble ourselves at your feet, oh God. Because every time that you bring us in your presence, oh Father, we know that you touch us in ways that only you can. 
Yes. Oh God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for your word that has come forth tonight, oh God. Yes. Lord, we know that your word, your word is never sent forth to return void. We know, yes. oh God, that your word that has gone forth, it will begin to accomplish the reason for which you put it in evangelist Gilbert's heart to have Amen. this discussion today, God. Yes. Father, yes. we know that when you died on the cross, Jesus, you had some of your daughters in mind. When you hung on that cross, you were thinking, you were thinking of Sister Regina, you were thinking of Sister Ekopi, oh God, you were thinking of Sister B, you were thinking of even the unmarried women, God, you were thinking mm. of all your beautiful daughters, oh God. Yeah. Oh. You knew that they would need your blood, you knew, oh God, that we would need your grace to make it in this world. And so God, we just want to bless you. Yes, we Lord. thank you, oh God that you shed your precious blood so that we can be equipped as women in ministry, oh God, that mm. no problem can be so big hmm, that you cannot mm. break it. Yes. God, we thank you for your word because in your word is the answer to every problem that we can possibly have, oh God. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. teach us how to rightly divide your word. Yes, Lord, your word Lord. says in the book of Hosea 4, 6, oh God, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Oh. God, I just pray over your children today, oh God. I pray over every woman that is listening to me, oh God, because I believe, mm. oh Jesus, according to Matthew 28, that you have called all of us to go into all of the world and teach God and teach that yes. which you taught us, Jesus, baptizing them. Oh, oh, Jesus, so everyone listening to me, God, I believe that you have called yes, everyone Lord. into ministry in mm. one form or another. Yes. Father God, we come and we just lay before you today. Mm. We acknowledge, God, that we cannot do it anymore. God is speaking to some women listening to me here today. You've been trying to do it by your own power. You've been mm. trying to do it by your own might. You have taken my matters into your own hands. But God is talking to you today. God is saying that it is not by your might. Amen. God is saying it is not by human wisdom. Amen. God is saying it is not even based on the circumstances that you think that you are dealing with. God is calling some of you today to trust him. God is saying you have to lay that burden down. God is saying, lay it down. Amen. For some Amen. of you listening to me today, God is calling you back into the cave. God is saying, you ran out before I sent you. Mm. My God. God is saying to you, don't be ashamed to come back home like the prodigal son. He went out too early. Hallelujah. But God is saying, come back. If you will come back, I will bring you into a place of restoration. You're already Hallelujah. having a lot of issues with your husband. You're having a lot of fights. He does not understand. You feel like giving up. God is saying, lay that down for a season. Yes, you are called. God, God is calling some of you mm. into his timing. God is saying, in my time, I make all things beautiful. Hallelujah. Some of you have lost faith. Because the battle has been so intense. Mm. But that's why God is saying to you, my daughter, come. Amen. God is calling you into a place of rest. Hallelujah. You see, you see, ministry is by grace. Hallelujah. There's nothing we do in ministry that we are doing. God is saying, you are not the one doing this ministry. It is me doing the ministry. You are simply a vessel. Hallelujah. I just need you to avail Amen. yourself. There's some of you listening to me. God is wanting to break that spirit of competition. Mm. You're looking to I the guess. left and looking to the right. And God is saying, I want you to stop looking at what is happening with other people. Mm. God is saying, I made you uniquely. I prepared you. I equipped you for the ministry that I have put in your life. But you're wanting to do ministry the way that your friend does ministry. Mm, my God. God is saying, stop comparing. Hallelujah. God is talking to somebody today. 
Hallelujah. Come into that place of rest. Come. Hallelujah. Come Hallelujah. and just lean on me. Mm. Lean on me. My God. Mashallah. Somebody needs to get off the driver's seat and let Jesus back. Hallelujah. To take the wheel. Mashallah. Jesus is saying, let go of the wheel and give it to me. It is not your ministry. Let go of the wheel. I will steer it in the direction that it is supposed to go. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of you listening to me, God is calling you as an intercessor. God mm. is reminding you today that you are that man's helper. God says, yes, I know he comes and he insults you. I know he comes and he makes a mockery of the ministry. My God. But God is saying he is my son. Mm. I molded him with my hand. He oh, too Jesus. has a purpose in his life. Mm. God is saying, if you will partner with me to begin to intercede for that man, you will mm. see what I will do in his life. Uh, uh, he will become your biggest advocate in the ministry that uh, I have put in your life. My God, Marababoshana, Jesus. God is mm. renewing the mind of somebody. The way you mm. look at your husband. Oh, Father God, just begin to touch the minds of your daughters right oh, now. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Father God, Lord. begin to touch their spiritual eyes, I, oh God, I, I, in the I, I, way that I, I, they I, I, see the spouses. Jesus. I begin to break those scales off of your eyes that are preventing you from seeing the blessing that your husband is in the life of your family. God is talking to someone. That man is trying his very best. But you are not appreciating it because you want him to do things your way. And God is talking to you and saying, I want you to see my son the way I see him. Jesus. Mm. God is reminding you that he is my precious son. I mm. love him just as much as I love you, even though he is not in public ministry. Mm. God is bringing you back to the place of submission. Where you can begin to honor that man. God, I just release a spirit of humility over this line right now in the yes. name of Jesus. Amen. God, let your, your spirit, Holy Spirit, begin to fall on every woman yes. that is listening at the sound of my voice. I begin to break the spirit of pride in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. I begin Amen. to break the spirit of pride, every aggressive spirit. Oh God, I begin to break unforgiveness right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. I break the spirit of offense. I begin to use the blood of Jesus. I begin to erase the memories. Some of you, God is saying, you are carrying old memories, ancient things that your husband did in 1900. You are still holding that in your heart. I begin to apply the blood I go deep in your soul. Yes. I begin to apply the blood to that hurt, to that Mara pain. Mara. I begin to wash it away yes. with the balm of Gilead right now. In the yes. name of Jesus. Somebody receive Amen. your healing right now. Amen. Receive Amen. your inner healing right Amen. now. In the Amen. name of Jesus. Every Amen. pain from that marriage. God is restoring your self-confidence in yourself. You are yes. broken. Mm. All the wounds, all the wounded women in ministry, God is talking to you right now. God is saying, I want to heal your wound. God is calling you into a season to just lay at his feet where he can heal your wound. Because if that wound is not healed, you will never be able to look at that man the way God wants you to look at him. So I speak to every wound right now. I say Amen. be healed in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. I send the blood, that blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Amen. Oh God, every broken place. Some of you are dead on the inside because that marriage has been so tough. Mm. But God is saying it is okay. It is okay. God is saying, just trust me. Let go. God is saying, let go. Let go, Hallelujah. daughter of Zion. Let go. Mm. Don't worry anymore about him taking advantage. 
God is saying, I got you. Mm. God is saying, you may have thought I forgot about you. But I break you to transform you. Amen. God is calling his daughters home. Come to daddy God. Amen. Come to daddy God. I Hallelujah. will give you what that man cannot give you. He's not your God. Hallelujah. God says, love him anyway. Hallelujah. But he's not your God. I am your God. Look mm. to me. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. God is saying, turn your face to me. That man is human. Forgive mm. him. Mm. God says, allow your husband to go through his own process. Mm. There's someone listening to me. You're already separated, but God is saying, allow that man to go through his own process. Hallelujah. I brought you through a process. Mm. God is reminding you of where he found you. Where he picked you from and how he cleaned you up and how he was patient with you. And then he began to teach you who he was, about who he was. And he taught you his word. And then he called you into ministry. God is saying, allow that man. My God. Allow that man to go through his own journey. God is able. God is able. God is saying, I'm your first husband. Mm. I will fix everything that is broken. I will wash away every pain and every tear. I will give you joy, beauty for ashes. I will put a spring in your step once more. Mm. I will put mm. life back in you in every dead place. Glory to God. You will live again. Mm. God is saying to someone, you don't feel beautiful anymore. My God. Because of the things that your husband has been saying to you. But God is saying, I have come to tell you and remind you. La that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that I made your daughter in my image. Mm. And you are beautiful. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is saying you are beautiful. Thank you, Father. There's a woman in ministry listening to me. You feel limited. Mm. You feel caged. You feel like you cannot fly. But God is saying, sit at my feet. I will teach you. Jesus. Drink from the cup that is in my hand. God is saying, drink from the cup that is in my hand. Mm. Take some time out and just drink from the cup. Oh, ba, 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 ba. And I will restore you. Mm. I will restore you. Because you cannot pour onto others out of your wound. Mm. God wants to heal his daughters today. Amen. Oh, Father God, let your healing balm flow on this line right now. Amen. Amen. Let it begin Lord to please. flow upon every woman, oh God. From the crown of the head to the sole of their feet, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father, Lord. let there be a renewing of the minds, oh God, for your daughters. I begin to pull down every stronghold of fear and of anxiety that yes. the enemy has built in the hearts of your daughters, oh God. Father God, I begin to pull down every stronghold that has caused them to feel that they have to fight. For what you can give so seamlessly, God. Mm. Oh, God, let there be a renewing of the mind of your daughters today. Yes, Father. Every pain be washed away. Hallelujah. Every hurt be washed away in the name of Jesus. Every Amen. confusion. Somebody's confused about their calling. Someone mm. is doubting whether they're called. My God. Because mm. it's been such a battle. Oh, but God is saying, I called you. I chose you. I knew you from before you were in your mother's womb. And I called you as a prophet unto the nation. Hallelujah. But I just need to clean you up first. Mm. God is saying, I just need to clean you up first. Someone listening to, to me, your husband left you. He's gone. Hmm. 
and you feel like you're less of a woman. My but God. God is saying, I will still use you. Hallelujah. God Jesus. is saying, I use Rahab. I will still use you. Hallelujah. God is washing away that stain, that stain of divorce and separation off of your life. Every time you want to minister, you remember that you are divorced. You remember mm. that he left. Mm. God is washing away that stain right now by the blood of Jesus. Amen, Lord. Amen, Lord. God is saying you and I together are sufficient. Mm. I will restore everything that the locust ate, that the canker worm ate, that the palmer worm ate. Oh, ba, 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 oh God, God is saying the dry bones will live again. Amen. Yes, Lord. I speak life. Amen, Lord. I speak life into every woman who's walking out there and still ministering, but you're dead on the inside. I speak uh, life into your soul and hallelujah. into your spirit, even into your flesh. There's some of you listening to me. You're, you're getting sick in your body. You're starting to get sick in your body because of the issues with that man. Mm. You're starting to deal with hypertension. Mm. You're even dealing with cancer because of the my stress God. level. Mm, my God. And God is saying, I'm bringing you into a place of rest. Oh, Jesus. He I leads see. me into the paths of righteousness for his name's mm. sake. Yes. He restores my soul. Mm. God is restoring your soul. Thank you, Father. You're listening to me and you're crying right now god says let it go let it come out let it come out let it come out mm. let it come out Jesus. your friends have gossiped about you they have mocked you but god is restoring you today yes lord god is giving you back your worth mm. god is giving you back your confidence Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Abba. Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I just commit every woman in yes, ministry. Yes. I mm. commit their husbands, oh God, right now. I bring the men before your throne of grace, oh God. Yes, Lord. God, you were the one who said that it was not good for a man to be alone. Mm. God, you were the one who said that the two have become one. God, mm. you are the one who said that a man who does not treat the wife of his youth right, that you will not hear their prayers. Mm. God, I bring your sons before you. Amen. Wherever they are right now, mm. Holy Spirit, we ask you to begin to touch them right now. Begin to arrest every man of yeah. every woman who is here present, who is crying, who is weeping, mm. who is seeking your face in her situation. God, these are your sons. Yes, Father. God, these are the priests of the homes. Mm. God, I call them back into their rightful place in their homes Amen. as priests in the name Amen. of Jesus, oh God. Amen. Amen God, let your word Amen. burn like fire upon their tongues in the name yeah. of Jesus. Let your Amen. word take root in their hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, your Amen. word says that let every man love his wife as Christ loved the church. Mm. Father, let your love that is shed abroad in the hearts of your children, let it just begin to flow into the hearts of every husband who has mm. not been treating their, their ministerial wife right, oh God. Yes, Father. Father, saturate their being with your love. Yes, Father. Father, let them begin to see their wives in a new way, God. Mm. My From this day forward, oh Jesus, Mm. Let there be love. Yes, Let Lord. there be love. Mm. Let there be love in those homes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Oh, Father God. 
Father God, I speak restoration. Yes. In every place where the marriage is bleeding, where it is broken, oh God. Mm. Let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, Lord. let them fall afresh in love. Yes, Lord. Father, give your daughters and your sons the mind to honor mar their marriage, oh God, above all else. Amen. Father, give them an understanding of the mystery of what their marriage is all about, oh God. Yes, Lord. May they understand that the marriage represents you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, we need your help. Your yes. daughters need your help. All of us need your help, oh God. Yes, Lord. We cry out to you, God, because we have no other father to go to but you. Yes. Father God, help us for your name's sake, oh God, that yes. the unbelievers will not look at the church and laugh at us because the divorce rate in the church is just as high as that outside, oh God. Mm. Father, keep oh us. God. Your word says that by your love, they will know that we are yours. Yes. Let that love take root, oh God, beginning from the homes, oh God, from this day forward. Amen. That the world will know that every woman serving you in ministry is truly yours. Amen. It is by the love that they will recognize us as yours, oh God. Yes, ma'am. Put your love in the hearts of your daughters for their husbands, for their children, for their homes, God. Give us a yes. desire to love the ministry of the home, God, mm. above public ministry. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us cherish the home, oh God, in the same mm. way that you cherish the home. My God. Oh, God. Father God, as we depart from this line tonight, Mm. God, I ask that you would just bless my brother and his wife. Bless Amen. their own home, oh God. Amen. Everything that needs fixing in their own home, Father God, fix it. Bless Amen. them, oh God. Take them to a higher level, oh God. Strengthen Amen. them as they work together in your ministry, oh God. Amen. Strengthen their home. Strengthen their children. Strengthen their ministry, oh God. Amen. Father, bless this platform, Jesus. That everyone who comes to this platform, will understand that Jesus alone is Lord. Amen. Father God, that whatever is done in this platform, it will mm. exalt your name Amen, above all Lord. else. Yes, Lord. Oh God, we honor you tonight for what you have done in all of our lives. Because we have asked you all these things in yes. the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much, woman of God. We are really Hallelujah. grateful. And uh, thank uh, Daddy for us for letting you be with us all this time. We really appreciate it. And have a blessed Amen. night over there. Bye-bye. Thank you. God bless everybody. Everybody. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you all so much. Uh, oh, my goodness. Thank you all. Next week. Monday again we're going to be having the second woman on this platform it's going to be 5 p.m. Central uh, 6 p.m. Eastern and uh, thank you all for being there today we are so blessed we are so blessed woman of God thank you for blessing us we saw all those wonderful comments I am sorry I'm not able to take those right now because we've been here for a minute uh, we would just read those comments and benefit from those things by ourselves there are contributions in those comments there are, you know, emphasis, people were re reiterating the things that were mentioned. Go through those comments and uh, be blessed. I just want to say, uh, everyone who listened tonight, you've heard the woman of God for yourself. This woman of God is so loaded. I saw Pastor Ngala Clement saying this woman is loaded. Yes, she is. I, I want to, I, I would, I mean, you heard her for yourself that this is, this is a woman that needs to go everywhere. This is a woman that needs to bless churches. I mean, pastors, whoever is on this platform, women in ministry, this is a guest speaker right here. This is a woman that is loaded. And we have many more coming. Uh, we hope that you will be blessed. And uh, uh, God bless you all. And thank you for being with us. And next week, Monday, again, is another time. Bye-bye, and God bless you.